This time on the Highland Woodworker. Turning is magical, but it grabs you and it doesn't let go. Get to know master woodturner and longtime Highland Woodworking team member Phil Colson. He'll show us how he makes a mountain out of a bowl hill <laughs> and gives us a tour of his super bowls. This is on the zero setting, so let's take a look at how easy it is to catch onto this circle. Plus, Popular Woodworking Magazine's David Teal cuts to the chase when it comes to those puzzling jigsaw settings. These stories and more, this time on the Highland Woodwork. Hello, I'm Charles Brock, and I'm proud to say that I'm a Highland Woodworker. I come to Highland Woodworking for all my fine tools and a great woodworking education. Phil Colson does some of the most beautiful wood turnings I've ever seen. It wasn't hard to find Phil. He's right here at Highland Woodworking. For 34 years, he's helped people in the classroom and on the sales floor. Phil, uh, I'm sure there's a road that led you to your 34 years at Highland Woodworking. Earlier when uh, we were setting up, I heard you talking about you're a what-if guy. Yes, that, this, is, this, is where, this is what has developed. You know, when you first start turning, you emulate those things that you like. And that's the process by which you enhance your ability to turn, e emulation copying, which is the way to do it. Then you reach a point where you've turned a thousand bowls. So what's the joy in turning? You know you can turn it. Actually, I became a turner in my mind when one day I had to put, I had to put oil in my car and I couldn't find a funnel. Uh -huh. And I went into the shop, turned a funnel. Drilled a hole in it? Put, no, just turned it. Okay. Yeah, the whole thing. Put the oil in the car and threw the funnel away. And I went, hey, I'm a wood turner. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this what if thing mm -hmm. is about being able to play. Uh, as we get older, and I'm 75 now, just a youngster. Well, you don't look a day over 76. Thank you. So, yes. I appreciate that. <laughs> so, I, I started this thing of what if, what if, what if, what if. What if I do this? What if I cut this way? Why not try it? And I try to teach that in my classes. And I tell the students always, I say, look, turn your bowl. Make it your bowl. If you want to copy mine, that's fine but turn your bowl. And they'll say, well, uh, how, how thick should the walls be? I said, I don't know. Right. How thick should they be? You know? That'd drive an engineer crazy. Yes, it would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how did you start out? What was Phil Colson a kid? Well, when I was young, I grew up in my father's shop. My father was a master carpenter, maker, and he was very meticulous about things to the point that we would say, Dad, we're going to build a tree house, and he would say, well, wait till next weekend and I'll help you, oh. which meant, you know, he was going to build it. So from that, I felt challenged to try to do something to get his praise, mm -hmm. and so I started working in the shop doing stuff, and then, as life will do, takes you out, moves you through some things, spent time in the Navy, uh, became a, a different type of artisan, did stained glass, uh, did jewelry, uh, became a dancer, and whoa, all whoa, of Whoa, 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 you became a dancer? Yeah. Really? Yeah, a modern dancer. Well, it's interesting. Uh, because all of those elements are brought together exactly. in your Exactly, that's artistry. what I was going yeah. Yeah, to talk about. Well, go ahead. Yeah, so with that kind of background and sort of the arts or creativity, uh, I became a woodworker, straight line woodworker, mm -hmm. you know, and 
had moved to Atlanta, built my own shop. It was beautiful shop, mm -hmm. very oriental from the outside because I'm also a gardener. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we moved and I was sitting on the couch and my wife says, you got to get up. You got to do something. What would you like to do? And I had an old 50s garage now. Mm -hmm. That's all I had. And uh, I said, well, you know, turning has always fascinated me. So she bought me a lathe. And I went out and I started turning. And turning is magical. And if it grabs you, I got rid of the table saw, the joiner, the planer, kept the bandsaw. But it grabs you and it doesn't let go. So you went from flat border, yeah, is what I call straight call, line, flat yeah, board, yeah. to turning. Yeah, and then you start dealing with shapes and space yeah. and so forth. Well, I was also the head gardener for Jackson, Mississippi and managed a botanical garden there. Mm -hmm. So form and shape, nature, all fascinated me. It became almost a spiritual thing because I was taking this fiber that had never seen light other than its own light and taking it and forming it. So I, all of a sudden I felt this vast responsibility. My responsibility is to try to bring forth an object out of this tree. This is going to sound weird that the tree would be proud of. Well, this is beautiful. Tell me about it, Phil. Uh, this was a piece I turned. I turned it green. If you notice, it's oval, yeah. not round. But I kept looking at it and looking at it and looking at it, and finally it dawned on me that it's a landscape and that it is a path. It, it travels the whole circumference of this. And so I wanted to take people on a journey. So I started with the little guy here, who is me, yeah. with my staff, and I'm going around the thing. I have a house here, a lake, you know, so forth. There are mountains, valleys, trees. It's just... It's, so this is a story vessel. It's, 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 yeah, it's a life vessel. It's a story of a life. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. What's, uh, what's the material? What's, what kind of wood is this? This is yard wood. Yard wood? Yeah. Found it in the yard. Yeah. And I, I think it's maple, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it kind of looks like maple, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, and the spalting almost adds to it. The spalting was everything. Yeah. You know, I can't do that. Mother Nature has to do that. All I can do is be observant enough to, to see that, oh, that's incredible. And, and, and the spalting really kind of makes the landscape, doesn't it? It, it is the landscape. Yeah. All I did was add in to it. I, I live close to Nashville, so immediately I want to play this. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not tuned. Very out of tune. Okay. But my wife is a professional harpist. Ah. And so I wanted, I, 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 I just, it was too much of a challenge to try to make a harp. So I made a bowl harp. Well. And it can be tuned and it can be played. What a wonderful idea. I've never seen anything like that. Is that, is that? I haven't it? either. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're seeing it now. Well, yeah, we are. Yeah. And then I wanted the pyrography because she plays Celtic music. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to put a Celtic knot in it and texture it. And that was great fun. Uh, here's some, these are not tops, are they? Yeah. Well, this one, that oh, one. Yeah. And it's actually a top, but. Well, these, these are just, these are playing again. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a piece of redbud. Really? 
and redbud is very difficult to keep it from cracking. And so, and plus the spalting in redbud. And mm -hmm. this, of course, is all down, down the grain, mm -hmm. not side grain, yeah. like you have. Yeah. So that it flows around it and everything. So this is turned with end grain this way? Is yeah. that the idea? Yeah, there would be a, yeah. there would be a right. Mm -hmm. But I, I, this is my wife's favorite right here. Oh, and she gave me instructions. Beautiful. She did. <laughs> Make sure it comes back home. Well, I love the carving on there. I mean, that is. This is, this is chattering. Uh-huh. It's called chattering. I have a chatter tool over there. Oh, I see. And this, this is texturing. It's done mm -hmm. with a wheel. Same thing up here. And this one's beautiful. This is a piece of pecan, uh, oh, I'm sorry, oak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and its top doesn't come off. I see. Because in the shrinking process, it locked in. I see. So there's, there's something inside there that I don't know about. Not that I put it there. I just feel like there's got to be something in there. It's a hidden universe. It's a hidden universe, yes. right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, I am really partial to these forms. Uh, and I don't know what it would be like. I've never turned anything quite like that. Uh, so how do you turn what's not there? Uh, carefully. Yeah. <laughs> Very carefully. Yeah. Uh, I just turn and... Uh, I, this, this like this is my absolute favorite. Well, uh, it, it's for, a beauty. Can I pick it up? Sure. Right. Uh, because it's like it's like seeing the inside of things. It's like presenting presenting a, a part of, uh, not the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You have to look deeper into it than you do around it. Uh, so I, I, I love doing these one-offs. I have several of them at, at home that I turn. And this is the wood that everybody throws away. They don't want this wood. This wood's no good. How do you chuck something like this up? Uh, all right, I'm gonna have, I have to reveal my secret. Oh, reveal. Oh, um, the real Colson. The bottom part yeah. is separate from this part. Okay. I can. I just took and see made it. Made yeah. the bottom part. Yeah. And then glued the upper part to it. But how you, I would put between centers is here, mm -hmm. and turn it. I see. And this would be chucked down here with additional wood mm -hmm. that would come off later. Yeah. And so it's chucked. And as far as this hole goes, it's once it's all chucked, all I had to do was clean out the hole a bit. As you know, Phil, I love Highland Woodworking. It, this is like coming home. I taught my first class here. But uh, tell us about your adventure in working at Highland. Well, uh, when I first moved to Atlanta, it was 1980. Uh, came over with my brand new wife lovely woman mm -hmm. and she actually gave me a table saw for my wedding gift uh inca tilt table oh yeah yeah i used to sell them here yeah we used to sell them years ago right and so i was working at fernbank science center mm -hmm. and i would come over on the weekend and straighten the lumber up down in in the basement it was across the street then mm -hmm. and uh they had classes, and I took a, a plane making class from somebody, I can't remember who. Uh, and it was just a wonderful place, and I got to know Sharon and Chris, and they wanted to move over here, build this place, and they had an out, outdoor area. Well, we got to talking and said, well, why don't we sell some plants? I mean, that's, that's what I was doing at the time, was plants. Mm -hmm. And so I came across and started doing plants. And then 
that evolved, and we were actually part hardware at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, plumbing, electrical, everything. And I think the transformation into what it is today was kind of row by row, or yes, it yeah. was. Yes, mm -hmm. it was. And then there was adding on, and mm -hmm. so forth. And it just evolved uh, with my background in working wood and so forth. I could contribute there, uh, learning the equipment. I could contribute there, and also just doing whatever. So I, I work in all aspects of it. Mainly now, I do all the picking for the shipping mm -hmm. that we do. And I pick because I've been here the longest and I know where everything is. And, and you know what the best part is? What's that? All of the information I have received from our customers. Learning from them? Absolutely. There's one, this old painter, he, he said, hey, young feller, that was when I was a young feller. And he said, young feller, let me tell you a secret. He said, if you take that can of paint, make sure that the lid's on good, turn it over, it'll never dry out. <laughs> it's dry. He was. Yeah. I so I all, all of any finish that you mm -hmm. have, if you make sure that the lid's on good and you turn it upside down, the air can't get in there to evaporate it. It's up in the can somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's brilliant. And so, I mean, this, that's the way it's been with people sharing uh, all of their, uh, their tragedies, their successes. You know, it, it's been like, I don't know, I've got lots of stuff up here now. Phil, how would you like to be remembered? That people laughed. That's what I would like. That people had joy uh, because I happened to be around or I said something that struck them as funny. That's what I would. So when I'm dead and gone and they're drinking a beer, just a little bit of humor or joy gets into their heart and makes them feel good. Later in the show, we'll head back to Highland's classroom where Phil Colson's project takes an interesting turn. But next, Popwood's David Teal brings you up to speed on those tricky jigsaw settings. You're watching The Highland Woodworker. I'm just an average down-to-earth woodworker. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm probably about a 5. But one place I score a perfect 10 is right here, and I plan on keeping all 10. That's why I have a saw stop table saw. And there's more. Plenty of power, superior dust collection, and absolute accuracy. These features have made it the best selling cabinet saw in America. Let Highland Woodworking help you put a saw stop in your shop. Highland Woodworking stocks a wide selection of Rikon power tools known for their innovative design and rugged durability. Highland has sold thousands of Rikon's industry-leading bandsaws with sizes to fit every woodworking need, from the compact affordable 10-inch model to competitively priced 14 and 18-inch models. Shop us also for Rikon's reliable planers, lathes, and professional low-speed grinder, all with an exceptional five-year warranty. Rikon. Power tools. For 35 years, Lee has manufactured the world's best joinery jigs. From our award-winning dovetail jigs and mortise and tenon jigs, to newer innovations like router table jigs. Easily add strong, beautiful joinery to your woodworking pieces, like half-blind dovetails, box joints, mortise and tenon joints, and through dovetails. Lee, simply the easiest and most versatile router joinery jigs. 
Allen Woodworking has been a leader in woodworking education for more than 30 years. They offer all kinds of woodworking classes year round, ranging from how to hand cut dovetails and mortises to how to sharpen a plane or a chisel, how to build a cabinet, a chair, or a bookcase, or how to turn a wooden bowl. There are classes on wood finishing, French polishing, and even antique furniture restoration. For a list of upcoming classes that may interest you, just look in their catalog or go to highlandwoodworking.com. Hey there, Highland Woodworker fans. Here at Popular Woodworking, we are happy to share our tips and tricks with you for every episode. Take a look at this one, hope you enjoy it. Welcome back to the Popwood Shop. It's time for another shop tip or trick. And today we're gonna to talk a little bit about your jigsaw. Now most jigsaws, probably 90% of the jigsaws out there these days are pretty sophisticated. And they've got a little switch right here that you may not know what it does or you didn't read the instructions to find out about it. What it does is actually changes the angle of the blade. And that's a good thing and it can be a complicated thing. So let's take a look at the differences. Each jigsaw is gonna be slightly different. In this case, we have four settings. We have a zero setting, which is where we are now. One, two, and three. Now, if you got it set on the zero, what happens is the blade, when it goes up and down, goes straight up and down. No problem there. When you kick it over to one or two or three in this case, what happens is when the blade's going up and down, it also moves this way. So it's getting more aggressive during the cut which is valuable if you're trying to move through a board, a three quarter inch piece of something quickly, this more aggressive cut cuts more quickly. But there's a little bit of a downside too. And let's take a look at the pros and cons on some boards. With our switch set to zero, with the blade going straight up and down, we get a nice clean cut, although it's slower. What you'll find out is it cuts on the pull, and so the tear out at the top is not so bad. Now when I switch the setting to three, because of the forward motion of the blade as well as the up and down, it's going to tear out more. As with any jigsaw cut, if you wanna reduce the tear out, you can always put a piece of masking tape over right where you're cutting and that'll reduce tear out regardless of what setting you're using. Now, the other situation is when you're cutting a tight radius, jigsaws are actually pretty good about that, but because of the different throw in the blade, you're gonna have a different experience with a one setting or a zero setting and a three setting. This is on the zero setting, so let's take a look at how easy it is to catch onto this circle. Now that's still a pretty tight radius and I got some burning in trying to make that turn, but we were able to pretty much stay with it at that zero setting. Now I'm gonna to switch to the three setting. Let's give it another try. It's a lot harder to maintain this circle, although we were almost able to do it. But because of that kick forward with the blade, you can't turn as tight a radius. So if you're doing tight radius work with a jigsaw, you wanna use the zero setting, not the three. It'll give you a cleaner cut. Jigsaws are great tools in the shop. They do so many things for you in so many different applications, and they're so portable. But take a little bit of time to learn about how you can best use them so you get the best performance out of it. That's all for today. Coming up, a very moving demonstration with Phil Colson. You're watching The Highland Woodworker. Whiteside Machine Company has been in business for over 30 years providing customers with quality router bits. Fine Woodworking Magazine has declared Whiteside router bits best overall and best value when compared against 17 other brands. No matter the router application, they have the type and profile of carbide router bit you need. When you put a white side router bit to work in your shop, it is guaranteed to make you smile. Meet the Bora Centipede. 
The lightweight and portable workshop table that supports up to 3,000 pounds, stores in a small space for tight shops, and opens into a work table to bring your work to a comfortable height. This makes the perfect companion for your track saw. Comes with X cups and hold downs to secure your work. Upgrade your shop today. This show is about sculpture that rocks. Watch it at charlesbrockchairmaker.com. Let's go. If you can't make it to Highland Woodworking in Atlanta, Georgia, you can shop online at highlandwoodworking.com. They're great at getting what you want to your shop quick. Let Highland's legendary wood slicer resaw blade help make it easy for you to get great results sawing thick lumber into thinner boards. The wood slicer is designed to cut much faster, smoother, and quieter than ordinary bandsaw blades. You'll be amazed at how smooth a surface you'll get with a wood slicer. Its variable tooth pattern greatly reduces noise and vibration. Order a wood slicer from Highland Woodworking for your bandsaw today. So, Phil, we're going to approach this as a what if. As a what if. Yeah. The... And, and what, I, what I generally do is to just look at the wood. You know, sometimes this has already been cut into a sphere or round, mm, right. or sphere, round. And uh, so I was noticing on the back side here that there's a sort of a mountain. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, what if, what if I try to do this in such a way that it's inside the bowl? When you look in the bowl, you'll see the mountain. Okay. So I, I, I like hidden things a lot. So. I put it between centers, turn it on. It's, it's more or less balanced because, because it's cut close to round. Yeah. And then if you take it here, it's perpendicular to the bed, so it's got to be running pretty true. And all I'm doing now is creating a, a shape. Notice I, I didn't finish up with this bowl shape. One of the big things with particularly beginners, because I teach a lot of beginners, is whatever the size of the wood, that's how big they make their bowl. I see. When the truth is, it may not be balanced 
that large. So I stop here. I'm going to turn it around and put the chuck on it. Grab it from here, and then it'll be a more positive hole. So the recess is going to be used right. First, I'm going to use it as a grip, okay? And then I'll use it as a recess. I see. And you see it already has a lovely crack in it. Yeah. thing is that I don't have to look at it to make a cut. <laughs> That's true. Because once you've established a kinetic memory, it just does it. So I'm thinking that this is not necessary, that it'll be a shallow so that it will show it better, mm -hmm. if that works. Okay. Now I want to speed it up. Now that it's balanced and turning true, I guess. Right. A lot of times I get asked, what's the appropriate speed? And I've seen the charts where the mathematicians figure out all of that. Uh -huh. You turn at the threshold of fear. <laughs> so I tend to be at the a threshold fearless of fear. Yes, okay. Turner. <laughs> Now there's a psychological thing about bowls, and that is if the top slightly moves in, things won't float out of it. Okay. If it's open, mm -hmm. things can be in the bowl and just lift out, psychologically. Yes. So, you'll always see that I'll come in here and put a slight 
curving in okay. type of thing. To keep I don't want keep whatever's in there to get out. Just get out, right. Yeah. I'm doing now is deciding on a uh, rim thickness. And because turners are notorious for trying to make the bowls as thin as possible, sure, I'm going to make mine thick. Just yeah. a rogue all the way. Well, <laughs> you know, main, mainly much ado about nothing. There you go. <laughs> now this lathe is very versatile, isn't it? These are great little lathes. Yeah. I've been teaching on them now for years, mm -hmm. and they just hold up well, you know? I mean, it's a little 12-inch lathe. Whenever you get a catch, mm -hmm. And I'm not beyond getting a catch. Right. Stop immediately and reseat it. Because if you wait too long, you'll never get it back. There's the mountain. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's it. It's in the bowl. It's in, you, it's you in told the bowl. Me it would be in we the bowl. were going to try to get it in the bowl. Yeah. And sure enough, we did. And there you go. What could be better than a saw stop table saw in your shop? Well, I'll show you. It's a saw stop table saw with a saw stop router. Saw stop offers three types of router tables, inline, standalone, and bench top. The inline tops are cast iron and fit saw stop contractors and cabinet saws. Positioned inside your table saw's footprint, they save precious shop space. Their mass transforms your table saw and router table into an incredibly stable machining center. It comes with a three and a half inch tall aluminum fence. The fence includes a dust port and adjustable split faces, ideal for joining and other offset operations. They all come with a large paddle switch to turn your router on and off without bending over. And they all have dual slots one standard miter slot for gauges and sleds, and one T-slot for accessories. The table's opening accommodates many brands of base plates. With SawStop, you have many options. They all accept the SawStop router lift and downdraft dust collection box as extras. The optional steel downdraft dust collection box contains any shavings that end up below the tabletop and connects to a four inch hose. The hose connection junction 
also lets you connect the fence's two and a quarter inch dust port to your central dust collection system. Adjustable draft ensures maximum collection efficiency. The optional saw stop router lift accepts router motors between three and a quarter and four and a quarter inches in diameter. The saw stop router lift has a quarter inch aluminum plate and a chain synchronized four post lifting mechanism for fast and easy above the table cutting height adjustments. SawStop's router tables offer the weight, rigidity, and stability of cast iron, letting you reach greater levels of precision in your shop. Call Highland Woodworking or visit their website for more information about fitting an inline router table on your SawStop contractor or cabinets. Improve your woodworking experience. Sign up for Wood News Online, a monthly newsletter showcasing the latest news, tips, and classes Highland Woodworking has to offer. By signing up, you'll receive the latest episode of the Highland Woodworker, special store promotions, and Wood News Online delivered straight to your inbox. Sign up today. Well, that's it for this episode. Be sure to follow us on social media. And until next time, I'm Charles Brock, and I'm a Highland Woodworker.